Uh, good afternoon. So what I'd like to start with is a change that happened in the workplace uh, in the last 24 months that you probably heard about that I don't think many people discuss. And that has, I think, profound impact on the job of all of us. What I'm speaking about is actually the, the fact that the baby boomers and the Gen Xer have been outpaced by the millennials. But 24 months ago that happened. You could just say, yes, we heard all about it, etc. What's the impact? What is very interesting to see is that when you ask millennials, how do you define yourself? What is really unique about you? Do you know what they, how they define that? Technology. It is our use of technology that makes a huge difference for us compared to other generations. And now they are the number one populations within the workforce. Love to see how many millennials in the room? <laughs> one, two. <laughs> right, so we have a gap here in terms of understanding what our new workforce wants, how we deal with them, and most of the time we have to admit or they start to look like this because there is a high level of demand, there is a high level of innovations, there are a high level of technologies. That's our new normal and that's not going to change. This is what our days look like. So what I'm going to present today it's to give you a sense of how you can leverage technology actually not to have your day like this where the achievement is cleaning your inbox and feel good about it. It's about how technology can help you to actually take back control and leveraging what they do, not only to do new things, but also simply to innovate on existing processes. That's what, what we're going to do. And this change is often not optional. Because we saw the, the, best case, the, the, the Best Buy story, which was very interesting. And among 1,500 companies, what we've seen in the last 15 years is that many disappeared. Do you remember Blockbuster, Borders, Britannica? I mean, all of those companies, they just disappeared. So businesses altogether disappeared. Type of jobs are disappearing. I wouldn't want to be a truck driver or a taxi driver or limo driver for that matter is in those days. I mean, the, the projections are pretty, you see, self-driving car will happen. I spoke with people that are working on that. They just say three years on the highway, five years, it will be all over. So we need to think about that. AI for our job, white collar jobs, they just say it's going to replace lots of things. So we need to embrace this. The, the issue that we see often though, is that bombarded with all those innovation, you ask yourself and you just say, well, well, shall I start? Where, what's the most important? And so I'd like to ask you first to have clear clarity in terms of what is your most strategic value? What is your most strategic role for your organization? And it's not a rhetorical question. You really should, if, if it's not clear to you, you really should spend time to think about it and you have peers here to to, to bounce those, those ideas with you and just to make sure that what you're spending your time on the most important, because that will trigger all the decisions that you take after. Having been dealing with CHROs and talent management organizations for you know, a number of years, my little contributions to, to see what I've seen, where organizations are making the most impact within organization um, are at three levels. And to explain that, I'll take the analogy of sports. And if we think about your organization as a team, and the, you see the league as being all the other organization, what is your most strategic role, you as head of HR, head of talent management? If you take the analogy, is it counting points? Probably not. In business, like we've seen, it's CFOs. That's typically financial performance. That, is it the rules? No, I mean some, but no, it's probably more legal. Is it the strategy of the game? No, it's not. It's typically CEO or the, the overall strategy group. So what is it? Anyone wants to have the right players in the right positions? Exactly. One of the key things that I believe 
you could have is hiring and retention, st specific targeted retentions. Those are two very strategic impactful role that you can have. But there is a third one, which I believe is having a culture of performance. I think you as a leader in those roles, that's, those are the most strategic role that you have. Does that mean that you shouldn't pay attention to payroll and benefits? For sure. Is it going to create a key strategic differentiator for your organizations? I don't believe so. However, the three others will. So that's why in terms of having a key strategic role, I think you should be crystal clear on that for the future and for your, your job. I'll let you, and if we have dinner together, I'll drill you more on that. But the, the overall departure of anything, I think, should be with that clarity. Now, when we look on how the economy is evolving, we saw technology have been changing a lot. One of the key things that we've seen at Chexter is the fact that what we could call here that we live in what we call a collective intelligence economy. What does that mean? Another buzzword out there, what does that mean? The collective intelligence economy, let me show you in terms of how our behaviors, your behaviors, all of our behaviors have changed radically, completely in the last couple of years. Let's say even the last 10 years. If you think about 10 years ago, you wanted to buy a blender. And bear with me, it's relevant for our job, right? You wanted to buy a blender, what did you do? You just went to a corner store, you started to speak to the salesperson, etc. What do you do today? You go online and you look at review. By the way, anyone not doing that today? Okay, we all do it. Same thing for travel. Instead of the travel agents, it is TripAdvisor. So the questions that I'm asking you now is, how does collective intelligence that is, has transformed radically the way we make the decisions about buying things, about going on vacations, et cetera, have changed our way to make decisions about talent? Most of the time, when I speak with executive or HR executives, they just say, well, we find people a little bit differently. They're more online, et cetera. But I just say, well, I'm not speaking about finding. I'm speaking about decisions. How do you make sure someone is great at their job? And most of the time, there is not that much of a difference. And that's essentially where Chexter started. I was previously um, at Taleo, heading the uh, research divisions of Taleo. And I saw that as a, as a trend. I just said, there is something here very important. How can we leverage the collective intelligence of a number of people to make sure that we can leverage the, the organizations, the decisions that the organizations are making in a more intelligent fashion? And that's why we co-founded Chexter, and now we have a number of Fortune 500 using us. How do they use us? They use us in different parts of the, I would say, the talent life cycle. From the interview checkup, which means how do you debrief after an interview? What research have shown is what? Is that most of the individual doing those debrief, it is often the most senior or the most vocal that will drive the decisions towards their point of view and it's not the intelligence of the group. We see that over and over again, and academic research show that. So we just say, there must be a better way. That's one. The reference checking, most organizations today are doing it over the phone, and they really often just wonder, is it really still relevant? Then we have also quality of hire. Everyone say, hey, quality of hire is very important. How do we make sure we hire only the best people? Can we help that with collective intelligence? And we did. 360 and exits. I won't cover all of them today for the sake of, of we have five minutes left. I'm just going to cover one that is probably the most um, often questions, which is the reference checking. Just by curiosity, who's doing reference checking here in the room, in their organization? So about Half of, half of the organizations. What we see is that indeed there is a crisis in terms of thinking of how colleagues can help to make decisions on other individuals. Even though we do know that peer rating and research have shown that is one of the best, if not the best way to assess people. We know past performance is the best predictor of future performance. How do we know past performance? Well, we know because we worked with them, we looked at them, et cetera, et cetera. 
often we see that. A CEO moving from one organization going to the other brings a whole management team with them. Why? They worked with them before. They know what they're worth. They know, etc. So the, the core questions here is, can we revive that? Can we re-give something that lost its, its, its efficiency because often of legal issues into something that is really uh, valuable in the business? And we think we've done that at Chexter, which is very interesting because when we look at the traditional process, as we've seen, and this is based on 154 practitioners, you can see that typically people will spend about 76 minutes to do a process to get about, that will take three to seven days, and will get about 2.4 references, and will only very seldom put someone on the side. And, we and often we just ask ourselves, why do we do that? And I see some head nodding there. Why do we do that? And that was the case, for instance, I, that's the questions I ask the VP of HR. Just say, what is the last time you essentially ask someone not to, or not to be hired because of a bad reference check? And bear in mind, they're hiring thousands and thousands of people every year. And she says, I think we had two or three in the last five years. Say, well, the ROI may not be there, okay? And uh, so how did we transform that? What we did is, we did it digitally, leveraging the collective intelligence methodology. There is a, a whole body of research there. The MIT started center about collective intelligence, about how to make sure you can leverage the intelligence and not the group thing. And what it does first as a value is to give back typically an hour of time to your recruiters or your HR people or your hiring managers, depending on who's doing it. That's number one. And you just say, okay, that's a good, efficiency side, but at the end of the day, I'm doing it more than, than for the compliance. And some may, some of you may do it for compliance because they have to, and they have to check the box. That will be the big value for it. But the other values, which is very in interesting, is not only the faster process, typically in two days, but it's also the number of people that you get, and the number of people as, as respondents, and the number of people that you will put aside. Typically, we see 10 to 12% of the people participating in that will be put aside. And you can say, how that can be? Because most of the time, you can say, hey, we have a policy not to give any references. How then can it work? And what we've seen is that on average, when you do it digitally, when you do it online like we do, employees will invite eight references, eight, yes, six will respond. Out of those six, what we see, the candor, the openness, is so much different because it's digital, it's confidential. We literally have seen people writing, don't hire this individual. That you probably rarely have when you do it uh, over the phone, which is sometimes counterintuitive. But one of the very interesting elements that happen is the fact that individual are also monitored into what we are not paying specific attention to. I'll give you an interesting anecdote. We do have a number of retail organizations that use the product, and what they do, they ask individuals to do that, and those candidates, they just say, great, you ask for references, I'm going to be my own references. And they create essentially fake email addresses and start to create them online. Obviously some integrity issues there, we have some and I won't name names, but some organizations where it's up to 9% of what we call fraudulent behaviors. So that's, that's unheard of. So this start to be seen as something different than the traditional telephone and getting feedback. That's objective wrong behaviors that you can take on the spot. So those, those are a, a couple of benefits. The third one that I will, I will mention is the fact that those eight people and six responding you can ask them, hey, in the future, are you potentially interested in a job in the organization? Those are the references. This is an extension of our employee referral program, and we call it a candidate referral program. Search firms have been doing that for years. This works great. This is very, very powerful. So you have, you have here three key benefits. And I won't go into more details of that, but what it gives you is the ability to be truly analytics driven, leveraging collective intelligence to make better talent decisions in order for you to hire at the time of a hire or promote. It is used by some of our organizations, uh, promote people internally. 
So just to summarize, and this is one of, of the, the several products, but the, it's, it's often the one that people wonder the, the, the most because there is such an history there. But just to summarize, what we have done, and we have done that with many, many large organizations, uh, what we have done today, and my, my invitations to you is, first, the change and the way of the change in the innovation is only going to stay like it is and be bigger and faster. Inaction can be very costly, not only for your career, but for your organization, for your industry. So I invite you to definitely do something. Clarity of strategic alignment, very important for you to start there and to be very clear in terms of what do you need to do first. Innovation doesn't have to be doing something new, being on Twitter, doing advertising, targeted advertising that you never did before. It can be used for reinvention of things that you have done for years. That can be also very powerful. And collective intelligence that we have seen can deliver high value for your organization. That's it. Thank you very much.